So like for example, in this picture, there's um, in that corner there, there's <coughs> like an old record player that, you know, it's just the one piece, but that's enough to make them actually fill that space and then to, to make the homeowners, you know, reminisce in the good old days. And also, if you notice that light fixture, it looks like it would have been something from um, maybe a trip to Morocco or, or, you know, somewhere in that part of the world that they probably want to remember. And so, it's, you know, it's just two things. It's not every single memory that you have. So just keep that in mind. So um, with these trends in mind, you know, you want to pick and choose and see which ones you want to incorporate in, in your new decor for spring. And um, now we want to go ahead and move forward to planning your space, right? And, and make sure that your space is organized, not cluttered, and everything fits. Because that's the first thing I think in, in good decor, right? Make sure that everything is clean and um, in perfect relation to one another. Okay, so we're going to learn today why we need to plan our spaces how to place our furniture and our accessories, because you don't just stop with the big pieces of furniture, right? And accessories, you don't just throw them around the room and say, oh, my room is done. You kind of, everything has to be planned. There's a method to the madness, and that's how your room can look finished <laughs> and coordinated, and not just haphazard and, and incidental. Okay. So why do we need a well-planned space? Did I just tell you? <laughs> Okay, maximizes function. Um, you know, you buy a, what, 4,000 square foot home, you, you pay for all that square footage, you want to make use of all that space. You don't want to waste your money on um, space that you don't use. Um, obviously, it creates comfort if you plan your space well and have your furniture um, arranged a certain way. For example, do you like to put your feet up when you're watching TV, you know? do you? Does your family sprawl out on the floor? That all you need to think about um, when you plan your furniture placement. And um, obviously, it's going to be pleasing to the eye, which, you know, kind of, um, if it looks organized and, and well planned, then it relaxes your mind. And, and, you know, that's what we want, right? We don't want to be anxious when you go into a room. Okay, so number one thing we always need to do is measure. Right? We all know this, because we've all done the same mistake where we've gone to the furniture store and you know, fall in love with the big, fabulous sofa or the big, it, this usually happens with sofas, dining tables, or um, like wall units where you're like, oh my god, this looks so good in the showroom. And then you buy it and have it delivered to your house and it's just the elephant in the room because it's so humongous. <laughs> And then now you don't know what to do with it because you didn't measure your space. So you need to measure because how will you know if it'll fit, you know? So um, <coughs> you measure the space, you measure what you're going to buy. And then the first thing you need to do is you determine your focal point in your room. So obviously a focal point is the area that draws the most attention to your space. And it could be an architectural feature in your room. It could be... Um, something that you want to draw attention to, such as a piece of art, could be a window, um, or it could be your biggest piece of furniture. So in this picture, for example, focal point is where? Fireplace, yes, in the big transom at the top. In here is the window. Obviously, in a media room, what else could it be but the big giant TV, right? <laughs> okay. So now that you've determined your focal point, then you need to, as I say, drop your anchor. Your anchor piece is the largest piece of furniture that you will have in that room. And um, you need to place it in relation to the focal point. So in this case, for example, the anchor piece, your focal point is a fireplace. Anchor piece would be the sofa. And so you place it however you want to sit, you know, alongside the fireplace, for example. Um, this uh, homeowner didn't want to face the fireplace directly, he wanted to sit a little bit closer, so they did it sideways. 
in this case, the focal point is the largest piece of furniture in the room, which is the bed. And so that's just kind of a no-brainer. You just place that wherever you want. And then in this room, what, what do you all think the focal point is in this room before they brought in all the furniture? The window yeah, and the drapes. Room. Yes, the windows. And actually the light fixture too, mm -hmm. and which is the case in most dining rooms, right? You have a fabulous light fixture, um, hopefully in the center of the room, <laughs> or hopefully where you can center your table under it. And um, then your anchor piece would be the dining room table, and you would put it under the light fixture and arrange everything else in relation to it. And in this case, it's also centered on the wall here with the window, so it's kind of works well. Okay, because we're talking about anchors. So now you want to keep your other pieces from floating away, right? And I'm talking about the other smaller pieces of furniture. So this will be your occasional tables, occasional chairs, accent pieces, things like that. And so you want to arrange them then in relation to the largest piece of furniture. So in this case, um, they're arranged, you know, next to the sofa to create this kind of um, conversational seating area. A good way to keep your uh, other pieces uh, together, I guess, in a unified way is with, a, with an area rug, which is what they did here too. Okay. Uh, anchor piece here is your grand piano, and the focal point is, of course, the window on the wall. And then, so they arranged the um, sofa to face the piano so that, you know, when somebody's playing, then they can sit and enjoy facing the player um, while listening to the music. Okay. The other important thing when you want to arrange your furniture and plan your space is balance. And balance is not um, all about symmetry. And I know a lot of people, um, especially those of us who are engineers or who are married to engineers, you know, they all want everything the same, you know, like mirror image, everything's um, equal. Um, and it's not about that so much as it's about the weight in the room. And so what you want to do, it's kind of like when you're in a boat and you don't want to tip the boat over, you want to have the, the weight kind of spread around. And um, so that's what you want to do with your pieces. For example, um, in this room, you have um, the two chairs down here that balance each other out. You have um, the lamp over here. And on the other side is just accessories. They're not the same, but they carry the same amount of visual weight. And it's not the literal weight of the piece, right? Because they're not you know, going to be the same, but it's the visual. When you look at it, they seem to be about the same. Um, Another uh, good way they did balance in this room is um, this blank wall right here that's opposite the window. So to balance out the window, because with the draperies, um, it's kind of emphasized and it, you know, it adds weight to that feature. So they put the shelf unit over here. And um, if you notice, that shelf unit is not tall enough, so they added another piece on top to make it um, balanced. This is almost symmetrical. Everything's all, I mean, you could fold this room in half and it would <laughs> almost look the same, right? Except for the two side walls. So here you have the mirror, um, and then you have a shelf unit here, and balance each other out. Um, and you also want to consider your finishes, because for example, if they did the dark finish in the mirror here, and did the shelf unit in a lighter finish, it would seem unbalanced, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's something you need to think about. <coughs>